Unum's denial of physicians' claim that she isn't disabled as a result of breast cancer, but rather because of psychiatric problems. Disability carriers are always looking for a reason to deny a claim, and Unum can be particularly heartless. This is an example of that. This is the case of Berg versus Unum, and Dr. Berg was an anesthesiologist who participated in a long-term disability plan issued by Unum. She filed a disability claim uh, for 48 months of benefits as a result of the side effects of treatment for breast cancer. As you can imagine, Unum denied her claim on the basis that her disability was caused not by a physical condition, but by a psychological condition, which only had a limited payment provision of 12 months of benefits. What happened with Dr. Berg's cancer treatment? Well, three months before she was diagnosed with cancer, she had received uh, therapy with a social worker for interpersonal issues with her family. She was diagnosed with a general anxiety disorder. Um, and uh, she was at each session discussing her cognitive function. And it was noted by the social worker to be oriented and alert. Unfortunately, then Dr. Berg goes on to be diagnosed with breast cancer on January 3, 2019. And she stops working based on medical advice. She undergoes radical treatment, surgery, radiation therapy, uh, hormone therapy, and, you know, treatment that no one really wants to undergo, but has significant side effects. Now, throughout this cancer treatment, she continues regular therapy for her interpersonal relationship issues. And there was no change in her psychiatric diagnosis or in her psychological functioning. But she did have, you know, some mood swings secondary to one of the medications she was being prescribed for her hormone uh, therapy. And she also was complaining of some cognitive issues. Unum had her medical records reviewed by an oncologist who opined that Dr. Berg was not disabled as a result of the cancer or the cancer treatment. I find that hard to believe, but having represented many uh, people with cancer, and particularly breast cancer, um, she was having problems with fatigue and side effects of medication. And while her cancer was in remission, Unum's oncologist basically said, uh, you know, look, she may be having side effects from this hormone treatment, but they can use another uh, form of treatment if in fact she's having these side effects. So we can fix this side effect issue by changing medication. Unum suggested that her cognitive problems were really secondary to her generalized anxiety and not the side effects of medication. And as a result, they cobbled together these reasons to deny her claim. She appealed, obviously, this wrongful denial, and she submitted a report from a psychologist um, who had examined her, and that psychologist had administered cognitive testing. Well, her psychologist uh, was adamant that it was more likely than not that it was the cancer uh, and the related treatment that caused uh, her cognitive issues and not problems with anxiety or, or depression. Her treating physician, the examining psychologist, just didn't buy it. And uh, of course, there was ne not necessarily any objective evidence that her depression or anxiety contributed to her condition. And that was something that they were emphasizing. And that, of course, was fortunately supported by Berg's oncologist. So her psychologist, her oncologist are all on board. Of course, Unum's doctors disagree, saying we think that the cognitive impairment of these inhibitors is a topic of intense research, and they maintain the denial. She ultimately files a lawsuit in federal court. What does the court do with this? Well, the judge started the analysis by noting that the correct um, standard of review is what's called de novo, which means that the judge could substitute their judgment for that of Unum. If it had been a, a um, arbitrary and capricious standard of review, that would have been a whole lot tougher. Under the Sixth Circuit case law, the proper question, therefore, was whether the mental disability was a but-for cause of the total disability. And based on case law, Unum had the burden of proof. Uh, the judge really took Unum to task uh, about the fact that Unum really didn't address the but-for analysis and the impact of, of the totality of the medical condition. The court really noted that uh, Unum could not introduce any new rationales in their attempt to justify the termination of benefits, which they attempted to do. 
Unum's peer review report was rejected by the, the, the court because they had improperly concluded that Dr. Berg had disabling psychiatric symptoms prior to her diagnosis and treatment for cancer, and, and that alternatively, she had underestimated her psychiatric symptoms before her cancer diagnosis. That's a lot of assumptions, isn't it? And a lot of misreading of the medical records. The judge also rejected their argument that her core symptoms were common in psychiatric claims. And the judge noted that a post-treatment psychiatric dysfunction, you know, is you know, common in breast cancer survivors, but that's not necessarily the issue here. The issue was whether or not she was physically uh, disabled uh, as a result of the breast cancer, uh, the side effects of the treatment, including, you know, the fatigue and the ongoing side effects that she was having from uh, treatment recommended for her hormone uh, uh, therapy. And the, the court also rejected this, you know, comment by her physicians that it was a matter of interest in research. That was not the standard that uh, they had to use in uh, uh, determining her entitlement to benefits. Ultimately, the court awards benefits to Dr. Berg. I think that's a great win. But I think this case is instructive because it shows the games that disability carriers like Unum will use and the tactics that can be used to successfully overcome a denial. If you have any questions about your rights to benefits, call me today at 727-894-3188 for a complimentary consultation.